We're going to do a little bit of stock up, stock down, meaning that based on the current situation, what's happening in the league, um, whose stock is up, who who are we maybe throwing our, our eggs into that basket a little bit more and who maybe it, it not hasn't impressed us, but who's kind of on the decline and, and not performing as well, not as consistent, moving up and moving down. So this is going to be a theme moving forward for us. Let's start with stock down, Sandra, because when we're talking about surprises, both of them have been positive and our takeaways have been positive to start. Um, I want to go stock down. Who's maybe kind of shocked you in a bad way and, and hasn't performed as well as you have wanted them to? Yeah, you know, I was I was thinking of this when we were going to like start doing these these segments. Like, is it going to, you know, are we just going to make it like player related? You know, I, I love that you touched on some very important things there that, you know, it could, it could be a wide spectrum of of things here that grab our attention when it comes to stock up, stop down. So I, I was curious if maybe I would just lean more towards outside of the box and not focus on players so much, but think about coaching a little bit. I I think coming into this league, there were a number of head coaching vacancies for, for multiple clubs, right? It was something that we were keeping an uh, eye on. It was like head coach watch, like which team is going to finally make the announcement of who they hired and and, and why did they hire the, these, you know, these coaches. So, you know, we, we now know who they are. They've gotten three weeks in front of them, but I would argue that maybe it's not so much one of these new, super new faces to the league. I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at Angel City a little bit and I'm wondering when they're going to finally get that big, that big full 90 minute result, not just the win, but there have been stretches where they have dominated the game and then have looked a little bit lost. So I, someone that's a good shout. I'm someone who's very, very high on Angel City kind of in the off season going in, going into, into 2024, but there are, we're starting to see um, some similar threads of that, have lingered for the club, even outside of like Becky tweet. So now that she's getting, you know, this first full season in front of her, I think folks are are looking at some of these performances and going, Oh, okay. So the, the midfield is, is still something that needs work. And so I think maybe that leads to more questions about like, Hey, how, how, you know, how do they tackle their, their off season a little bit? I know that they, we're high on on, on Rocky Rodriguez and, and getting her involved. And I agree that that's a, a that was a massive uh, pickup for them. Obviously, Amandi Anreen is, is an icon of the game. So we, I wonder just when it's actually all going to gel uh, together. And I think that there's um, that there were a lot of us that were were high on on promoting Tweed to head coach that wanted to see like, OK, like, how's it going to look w- when she gets a, a full season in front of her? And for me, it's just not clicking just yet. So it's a little bit of stock down for me. But I mean, that could obviously change, right. um, you know, week to week. And then that's the beauty of the stock, Sandra. It's like up and down every day, even at times. I, I think for Angel City, losing midfielder Savannah McCaskill yeah. is a bigger hole than they maybe anticipated it would be. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, Angel City's kind of kind of trending a little bit bit, bit downward. Yeah. And I think when you can't really point a finger, I think I think that leads to more more questions. But again, I think there's something about the concept of early days and silver lining is like, hey, there's still time to to yeah. turn things around. And you could see in some of these ending stat lines that it's not so much for lack of effort, but um you know, what is it going to take to finally kind of, you know, turn, turn things around? Yeah. I mean, and Angel City scored in two of their three matches. They've only were shut out in the opening day against Mm -hmm. Bay FC. They got two in on um, Kansas City current and then against the Orlando Pride, they scored first. Now it was a penalty kick, but uh, Angel City with zero wins, one draw, two losses. They sit at the bottom of the table on goal differential. They're only behind Portland, who was also at one point who is my stock down Portland thorns um, and their inability to score and to pick up wins winless through the first three games. I don't think anyone would have predicted that heading into this season. 
just looking at the roster that Mike Norris has, the fact that Portland didn't have that much changeover in the offseason. They, they bring back a strong core of their starters from 2023 and, frankly, 2022 as well. They have a really strong roster with a lot of talent and a lot of depth. The, the pieces that Portland did lose in their back line, right, Emily Mengus and Quika, those are big pieces. But yeah. you've also got Megan Klingenberg and Becky Sauerbrunn that – and Reina Reyes, who has done a good job and, and has worked her way into this, uh, Bella Bigsby out on maternity leave. So three big pieces in the yeah. defensive end for Portland are out. Um, up top, Hannah Bedford, she is at Utah. And then Crystal Dunn leaving for Gotham. Yeah. Losing Crystal Dunn cost more than I think Mike Norris and a lot of people thought would cost for this Portland side. She is a leader. She's a veteran and she brings that mindset that is really all the intangibles that I think Portland, frankly, has missed this year in the first three weeks. Having someone on the pitch that can galvanize the group in adversity moments and turn the game, right, controlling more of the tempo, not to mention she's Dunn's incredibly versatile. She can play in the outside back position, in the midfield. She can play a wide player. She can play central. Um, it, it's allowed having crystal done has allowed Portland to dictate a lot of the game through these first three weeks. Portland has been way more reactive to the opposition instead of implementing their own style on them. And that is just not the Portland Thorn style. And that's not their game of waiting for the opposition to show them something and then changing on that. And so for me, that's why Portland is stuck down at, yeah. at this point in the season. No, I, I I don't shocking. I don't disagree with you at all, right? Like you, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> I, I'm with you a hundred percent. I I don't think there's been a game yet out of the three games where uh, I think folks take a look at at the performance in front and don't exit without a lot of questions. They're like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. What's happening? I know for myself too, I was just like, why is you know Hina Sakina not starting? Like why, you know totally. why is you know it, it's you know it's. You hate to see it, but I think you can you can almost sort of take a little bit of of how the thorns have closed out last season and going into this season and say like has some of that carried over a little bit? You know, another opportunity to to grab a, a shield, to grab a title, and and falling short of that, you know, in consecutive seasons and kind of like taking note of yes, Crystal Dunn, massive piece leaving, but someone who you mentioned earlier in that. Quika for me, I think was was yeah. a massive, massive loss for them. I I think a, at her time during the Thorns was a deeply, deeply underrated defender yeah. in NWSL. Someone that they re help uh, relied upon to help kind of spearhead attacks, but also keep you know defensive structure and organization as well. Um, and and that's that's a tall you know task to give to a a second year player you know you're asking maybe maybe they're asking a lot of of Reina Reyes in in this moment and then in along the line yes we're mentioning a Megan Klingenberger we're mentioning a Becky Sarbum but these are two players in in very different phases of their careers right now yeah. you know there's a lot being asked of of them so it, it you know it ultimately comes down to the co the coaching staff and and you know, having to make those those hard decisions and they're not easy ones, I think, especially when you have a Portland Thorns team that has so many uh, strong individual talents, deep, a deep bench. They still have that even with the pieces that they lost. And exactly. so I think that's why there's a lot of head scratching going on. Like, yeah. why aren't they getting it together? It's you know exactly. what it's doing for me, Lisa, it's 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 giving me like USWNT, like Tokyo Olympics a little yeah. bit where yeah. it's like you see this changing of a guard and there's some success. I mean, they obviously won a, a, a title in 2022. They ended up uh, promoting Mike Norris after the resignation of, of Ryan Wilkinson. And they have, you know, maintained their presence as a playoff team. They have, you know, remained in contention for shield, but have lost those. And now I'm kind of like, is, are we just witnessing, a lot of individuals trying to put together really good performances and not so much. Yeah, anything. that's a great shout because you're exactly right. There is so much individual talent. And despite some of the losses the Thorns faced in the offseason, they brought in uh, Jesse Fleming and Janine Becky and getting players back and healthy. Um, it, I think like having some of these veterans start will help Portland. And I don't know why Hina Sugita didn't start against Louisville last weekend. I don't know why Megan Klingenberg didn't start last weekend. Um, 
I, I haven't chatted with Mike Norris yet this season. I'm, I will coming well, up. You'll and find I'll, out first, Lisa. I'll find out. Don't <laughs> worry. But those were just some things I'm like, get some of the veteran presence back on the pitch and, and maybe that'll help them kind of moving forward just to organize these first few weeks of the season are so chaotic, especially now that there wasn't a preseason challenge cup. There wasn't a lot of preseason matches to test the waters in the NWSL. So these first few weeks do have a little bit of preseason vibes. Yeah. Um, okay. So for stock down angel city for you, Portland thorns for me, two teams at the bottom of the table. Not that surprising that we, we touched on them, but it is good to put it out there. NWSL stock up teams that, that have impressed us or players that have leveled up early on that we're excited to see in the first three weeks of NWSL season. Um, I, mine are some players, Sandra. Right. I'm going to go first with mine. Can Do I go it. first with mine? Drop it. Okay. Let her rip. Forward for the Houston Dash Mexican International Diana Ordonez. She has a brace to give Louisville their first win of the season this past weekend on the road at Bay FC. And in the first three games of this year, Diana Ordonez looked to be kind of feeling out what her team is doing and trying to understand what Fran Alonzo, the new head coach at Houston, is trying to implement in this squad. Follow directions, stick to the game plan, while also Ordonez needing to kind of flex her own creativity muscles and freedom on the pitch. And there have been moments and waves throughout the games where she's done that. But I think her freedom on the ball has also grown a little bit as she's understanding the system more. And her stock is up for me right now in this moment. And I think it's because her stock was so far down in 2023 for me. She just couldn't get a rhythm in, in Houston. And there was a lot of almost like broken musical instruments trying to play in an orchestra at Houston. They are starting to get their tune back. And if Ordonez can get on the right page and hit a right groove where she's scoring goals consistently, and it doesn't have to be a brace every game, but contributing in the creative chances that Houston gets in their attacking end, Houston is going to be a different team. If her and Maria Sanchez can get on the same page, that's going to be incredible fireworks. And we've wait, we've been waiting to see it. So for me right now, stock up is Anna Ordonez with the Houston Dash and, and what she's been able to do. Yeah, I what about you? I, yeah. I don't. I think that's a good shout. Um, I think it's a massive game that they're coming off of going into into week four. Maybe, you know, a little bit of an international break is coming at a good time um, for you know for the for the club because I would argue that you know they did they didn't start out their three weeks the way they wanted to but this is a good way to to kind of uh close close things out um so I think it's a good shot I'm with you I look when Mexican internationals thrive in the league I also thrive as well I'm like yes my skin is glowing my bills are paid everything's <laughs> everything's going great and feeling good so I think it's it's a, that's a good shot there um I'm I'm gonna stick with maybe what we were discussing a little bit uh, at the top of the episode I'm gonna stay in the Midwest shockingly but for me I I think when we take a look at um, leaders uh, in these opening three weeks, uh, for me, I'm absolutely looking at Vanessa DiBernardo. I don't think Sandra, anyone... I knew you were going to say her. I literally <laughs> Listen, had her written down and I was like, maybe Sandra's going to give her a shout. So I went you, with her. You already knew amazing. right here. The mind mel is back in action and live and everybody else could get, get to witness it. But you you already knew and uh, we're bringing it here and we're both going to touch on it because of course this is this is a player that it's almost um for me it's not so much of a renaissance because you know i i have was able to to watch vanessa di bernardo week in and week out for years locally in chicago with with the red stars she is someone who i know is capable of playing multiple positions in in a middle third but i love 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 that black landonoski has returned to nwsl has also remembered that he had coached against vanessa di bernardo many many times and knows that she is much better in a higher and attacking uh position i don't think there's another player that could be given player of the month vanessa di bernardo has left her footprints her cleat prints or everything all over the pitch when it comes to each and every single victory that Kansas City Kernan has had. She is the player of the month for me. Full stop. Hands down. Yeah, her sweat is everywhere, dripping on every blade of grass on the field. I agree completely with Vanessa DiBernardo. And I love that you gave the shout that it's it's not really a renaissance because she's been this good. Last year, she dealt with a lot of injuries. She had some concussions, right? Yep. If I'm not mistaken, which it, that affects your game 100%. every single 
day. And now that we're seeing DiBernardo healthy, she's had some time with this club in Kansas City, um, despite some of the internationals maybe not being there during preseason, that her ability to kind of partner up with the players on the pitch has worked out in her favor. She's also playing a little bit higher than I think mm -hmm. Katie had her last year. They they almost had her as like lower on the field as like yes. an eight at times a six, which she's so talented. Di Bernardo can play that role, but she's much more effective higher up the field as Absolutely. a 10. And that's where we're seeing her play now. So she can interchange in the front line. Out wide. She looks, she looks really confident too. Yeah, I think, you know, look, I think having a, a coach who is, has been around and has knows how to plug in players and in positions to succeed, I think is helpful, you know, and we're we're watching that come to life. I, I, I think because she has shown an ability to play in those different positions that um, in the past coaches maybe have relied on her ability to just deliver that that she was a player that they could trust with those type of responsibilities uh, coming off yeah. of of that 2022 season where Chris Petroselli was involved with the Red Stars I mean they they had to deal with injuries to their midfield as well at that time and it was like who in the world can we just sort of throw into this six and they said you do it Vanessa DiBernardo and guess exactly. what she did and they ended up you know finding their way back to a postseason appearance but you know, even in, in delivering in that, it maybe wasn't her her strongest position, but it it left she even then left very little room for criticism in her yeah. ability to do that. So I love that she's kind of being given a little uh, trust again to to have this sort of freedom. And uh, I think this is only going to lead to more dangerous attacking opportunities for Kansas City current as as she continues to get more games and they all get to continue to develop more um, chemistry with each other in the final third. In the interest of making up our own rules as we go along, I want to give an honorable mention Do stock it. up to uh, Umle Sar at yes. Washington Spirit, the forward, who uh, spent time in the NWSL last year. She She's not new by any means, but it's a really hard league to adjust to when you haven't played in the NWSL before. It's incredibly fast. It's incredibly physical, and especially the way Washington wanted to play last year. It was just kick it and let's run onto it or get the ball to Trinity Rodman and hope some magic happens. Sar and Rodman's connection and partnership is impressive and really fun to watch. Trinity Rodman has talked about it saying that uh, she really has worked well with SAR in interchanging positions and being able to read each other and do these little one-two touch passes, which I think has frankly put SAR in better positions to succeed. Of course, she got the game-winning goal for Washington against Utah this past weekend, but it's been a little bit more than that. A lot of her off-ball movements for SAR have been impressive to watch. So that's kind of my honorable mention. I love that. I think that's a good. I think that's a really good one. I, I wanna. I wanna keep seeing it. And I want to yeah. see it again. And I want to see it be successful, not against. Wait, it has to be sides. consistent. <laughs> I want it to be more consistent, and I want to see it not against teams that are also trying to, you know, get their footing and get their identities out. But I, they're clicking, they're cooking. I love it. Let's see more of it. I also want an honorable mention. Then, since you're bringing one up, I, it, I this was a struggle for me between Di Bernardo and this player. So I guess the honorable mention will go to Ashley Sanchez. Oh, She's nice. Cl talk about clicking. She's fitting right in with North Carolina Courage. Um, I think they went out coaching staff identified a player that they wanted to bring in to make sure that they still had kind of that you know attacking buzz and threat for them going into 2024 with the loss of Caroline that was a big question right like who is going to be that 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 player that kind of delivers that uh, dynamic play for them in the in, in the attacking third and for me Ashley Sanchez is uh is proven it that she was a great yeah, pick up for courage that's a great honorable mention she's done well um and it actually has not taken her a lot of time to fit into North Carolina's system. And that's a huge credit to Sean Nahas because he's built a system at North Carolina that is easily explainable and digestible by players because he can show film and say, this is exactly what I want you to do and where to go because it's the same day in and day out, no matter who's on the field, that position has this responsibility. Um, okay, that's our stock up players. If you liked it, if you agreed with us, leave a comment, drop your stock up and your stock down players, teams in the chat. We want to hear from you, um, kind of pick apart your opinions as well, because uh, you, you also are allowed honorable mentions in the chat if you want.